My good buddy Ian asked if I would be interested in taking a look at a monoblock tube power amplifier that had stopped working. It was part of a pair, you can see them here, and it had its own power supply for both of them. And I told him, sure, bring it by, I'll take a look and see if I can figure out the problem. We did know that there was a blown resistor that had fallen apart, the owner had uh, opened it up and the resistor came out. So you'll kind of see what was involved in the repair and that when we do the tour portion of the video. But let me tell you what these are if you don't recognize them. I had never heard of a company called Darid. These are Darid VP350B uh, monoblock tube amplifiers. They each have three tubes. Uh, I guess they're called set single into triodes by the people that you know are into this kind of thing. And there really was not much information I could find at all. The only thing I found is they were made around 2016. It's not really vintage, but hey, it's tubes. Why not just review it for the heck of it? Because nobody else has reviewed it. And it, they were around $600 for the set, best I can tell. The specs, the only thing that I saw was the rating for the power was seven to eight watts into i would assume eight ohms so what i'll do is uh, take a little tour of it and we'll look around back and then i'll remove the cover of the broken one and you can see kind of what it looks like inside it and what were the components that i replaced and then i will talk about what it was like to test them and listen to them here is a side view of one of the Darid vp 350b tube mono integrated amplifiers it kind of just shows how it has a nice finish and you can see the three tubes there this obviously is a rear view of the Darid vp350 we have a nice gold plated line input we have our dc power supply input here and then we have two different taps for either four or eight ohm speaker terminals and they're nice uh, three-way binding post kind of terminals this is a front view of the Darid VP350. Uh, sorry, this is out of focus. That is your volume control. This is the power supply for both of the Darid amplifiers. And you'll see that around back. It obviously has an on-off switch and an LED that comes on when they're powered on. And you can see we have our normal AC power cord input. And then we have the outputs to each of the amplifiers. Kind of interesting, it says to right amplifier to right amplifier. I think one would be to left amplifier, but it's pretty self-explanatory. One goes to one amplifier and one goes to your other amplifier. And this is what it looks like once you remove the bottom. This is a photo of the bad unit and you can't really tell so much from this angle, but this capacitor had uh, kind of burst open at the top. Well, maybe not burst open at the top, but it split open at the top more than what the picture shows. And a resistor that went right here had cracked and I believe it was like a 5 watt or maybe it was a 10 watt, like 220 ohm resistor that went across here, which uh, I ended up replacing the resistor and that capacitor and then everything worked the way that it should. Okay, I have adjusted the Darid's gain controls, volume controls, such that we have about 21 dB of gain. You can see our SNRs look not too bad, 85, 86 dB, and we're putting out 5 watts into 8 ohm loads. Also note that our THD plus noise is still not very good, minus oh, 35 dB, and we're about 1.8% THD. Our harmonics, in case you're wondering, look like this. You can see our even or second harmonics are higher than the odd or third harmonic, so that's pretty good. What I will do now is slowly increase the input signal level to see how much power we can get out before this guy hits 2%. So let me go ahead and start it up again. Hopefully you were able to hear that one kilohertz tone in the background, and that was the sound that the Derrett is making from the one kilohertz tone from my analyzer that's going into it. Uh, some amps are uh, fairly quiet and don't respond to that. Other amps make thumps. Other ones make a tone. <laughs> and some amps resonate the one kilohertz tone like there was a speaker inside of them.
then that's kind of what this one sounds like. Nothing unusual actually with that. And you can see we're kind of maxed out at about six watts into eight ohms and we're just, what, 2.3, 2.4% THD. So I'm gonna say this guy's probably, you know, a, a six watt into eight ohm amplifier. I've now switched over to the four ohm load taps and connected four ohm loads, of course. With the volume control set for the same, you can see the, the gain's gone down, oh, about two, maybe almost three dB. But look at our distortion, gosh, 6%, we'll just call it. SNRs aren't bad, but you can kind of see here, it doesn't look very healthy. And we're putting out four watts into eight ohm loads. So it's not looking very pretty, THD plus noise minus 25 dB, we'll call it. And, you know, it just doesn't look very good into four ohm loads. Set both of the Derrid's volume controls to a maximum, and that gives us about 29 dB. I've got a fairly small signal going in just because the THD is creeping up on 2%. Our SNRs are, oh, we'll say 83 dB at least, and we're putting out, oh, we'll call it 4.4 watts. And we've got a pretty small 200 millivolt signal going in. You can see our THD plus noise is not looking very good, minus 36 dB. And I kind of just wanted to see that, you know, for the max gain setting, we're only getting four and a half watts out. But I was curious what the maximum gain you could get out of this guy was. So I'm going to go ahead and back down the gain to around 20, 21 dB. Here is the Derrids. THD SNR response at one kilohertz with a minus 12 dBV signal going in and it's putting out one watt into eight ohm loads. Our THD plus noise is about 20 dB better than it was putting out five watts or more. And our SNR is a little worse, but about 80 dB. THD is much better, 0.2%. So if you have some really efficient speakers, you might be able to get by with one watt listening for for quite a bit of music here is our thd snr plot at one kilohertz with the derrids putting out about one watt into four ohm loads you can see that we finally got our thd down to about one percent snr 76 db thd plus noise minus 40 db and our gains about 19 and a half db and that's with the volume control set um, where it's been for all of the testing. Yeah, it just can't put out a lot of power without a lot of distortion. As far as the harmonics with the Derrid putting out one watt into four ohm loads, you can see we still have the even or second harmonics higher than the odd or third harmonic. So at least that part didn't change when we went from the eight ohm to the four ohm loads. Here are the Derrid's frequency responses from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz with them putting out about one watt into eight ohm loads. There are no specifications for the frequency response, but at the high end of the band, we're down maybe two tenths of a dB. And at the low end of the band, we're up maybe four tenths of a dB. So overall, the frequency response looks pretty good. Some of this ringing here has to do with the response of the output transformers to the chirp signal that my analyzer puts out. Here are the Derrid's frequency response from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz with it putting out about one watt into four ohm loads. You can see we have a lot of this noise going on here, uh, although it's really not that much when you look at it. It's plus or minus, what, three tenths of a dB. And we're down at 20 kilohertz, what, 0.6 dB. And other than that, I mean, if you just ignored kind of this noise stuff going on, it wouldn't be such a bad frequency response. Right now, the Derrid amplifiers are connected to 8 ohm loads. Their inputs are terminated into shorts, and the volume controls are still set for 21 dB of gain. Our system noise level is better than minus 90 dBV. That is pretty good. In case you were wondering about the Derrid VP350B's output impedance or damping factor, I have them plotted both on the same graph for you. Our damping factor is up here, and it's just oh, around five, maybe five and a half. And the output impedance are these plots here for each of the channels, and it's down around, what, 1.5, 1.6 ohm. So it's really not very good as far as damping factors or low output impedances. 
This plot shows the Jared's multi-tone response, and it's showing a distortion-free range of between about six to uh, nine. Here is the IMD response of the Jared amplifiers with them putting out about four watts into eight ohm loads. Volume control is still set for around 21 dB of gain. The IMD response is not really good. It's probably showing a distortion-free range of maybe five or six. I decided to look at the phase and rise time of one of the Jared VP350 amplifiers, and this is showing a rise time of about four and a half microseconds. There is no specification for it. It's kind of a, a little bit ugly response, but 4.5 microseconds is not too bad. If we come over here to the 10 kilohertz phase difference between a signal going in and one coming out, we're seeing a lot of phase difference at 10 kilohertz. I would say it's probably about 30 degrees of phase shift. And at 1 kilohertz, we're probably getting about 15 to 20 degrees of phase shift between the input and output. While I don't ever see myself getting something like this, uh, unless it was given to me, broken, and, and I fixed it and kept it, but uh, I do see they do have a little bit of appeal with the chrome and the tubes, you know. It, it does have a nice look to it. I've never been a big fan of having a separate power supply, but I guess it works with this. They're all small. They don't weigh very much. And the volume control has detents along the way, so, you know, that's kind of nice. The uh, three-way binding posts in the back are very nice and they're gold-plated and, uh, you know, that works real well, I think. Uh, as far as connecting with the cables, that's fairly simple and straightforward. As far as that stuff, I think it's pretty good. Now, if you were to get one of these things, I would probably go with a separate preamplifier because that way you don't have to adjust one volume control then the other volume control, or maybe you have a streamer and it has a volume control built in so you could adjust things with the streamer's volume control rather than move these things. But um, if it were me, I probably would use a separate preamp for it. But you wouldn't need one for these because they are integrated amplifiers. As you saw from the test data, six and a half watts at 2% THD into 8 ohms, uh, that's not going to do a lot for most people, um, but that's what I got out of these. As far as the max power, they look worse into 4 ohm loads. So these would not be something I would really want to hook up to 4 ohm loads, although I'm sure they would work, but they just didn't perform that well when I hooked them up, as you saw from the test data. Really, the only piece of test data that was any good, in my opinion, was the noise floor on this was uh, very low. For my listening test, I always start off by shorting the two inputs and let it warm up, and there was barely any hiss or hum. It was very, very low. Uh, when I hooked it up to my Carver C1 preamplifier, and I hooked these up to the Klipsch Lascala loudspeakers, which are very efficient, um, it worked well. As crappy as this thing tested on the bench, for the most part, um, it sounded just fine with the Lascalas. I hit 92, 93 dB SPLs for brief moments with some of the test music, and I didn't hear a lot of distortion or really any distortion. It was kind of real loud at that point, so distortion you know, isn't as apparent. Um, they actually sounded just fine. So, you know, sometimes things measure real crappy and they can sound okay. And, you know, that's kind of the story with these. Um, are they something I would recommend? I suppose for the right person it might might work okay, small size, but you really want to have some nice, efficient speakers like little Scalas or Klipsch horns or, or, or maybe some uh, Altec 19, something like that, some, you know, something that's real efficient. Um, I think these would work well with, you know, for the most part, but uh, they definitely are one of the worst things I've tested, you know, as far as... Uh, you know, just electronic gear, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, I'm sure the owner will be happy to get it back. So once again, I am curious to hear your comments and, you know, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, that's all I ask is that you uh, subscribe to it so that it will grow and it will give me motivation to continue to put these videos together. So once again, until next time,
Have a great day or night.